There's a decent chance that you're watching this thinking, I can't remember what I ate for breakfast this morning, let alone 15 years ago. There's no way anyone would have remembered Jesus' life and teachings in detail, particularly 30 years after he died. Fair point. But consider this. Our world is very different from the world that Jesus and his disciples lived in. In our digital world, we don't exercise any of the mental muscles that they would have had because our devices remember for us. My dad even has to check his phone contacts just for his own number. Now, he is old. Hey! But how many numbers do you know? Do you even know your own? In first century Jewish culture, the ability to remember was unbelievably impressive. When a rabbi like Jesus invited disciples to follow him, they were embarking on a journey that would require them to consume vast amounts of information and remember it. Since this was before the days of printing, learning was mostly communicated through the spoken word, and the average mind was culturally wired to digest and repeat this information, often word for word. As part of their training, many rabbis would have memorized the entire Hebrew scriptures. That's the entire Old Testament. In my Bible, that's like a thousand pages. It's like memorizing an entire science textbook. Most of us have some sort of experience of the Bible, for better or for worse. Because it's all bound together, you can assume that it's just one book, but it's actually not as simple as that. The word Bible comes from the Latin word Biblia, which just means the books. And so that's what the Bible is. It's a collection of loads of books written by individuals to friends and communities. You can see this in the way that Luke's gospel is written. It's essentially a letter from Luke to his friend Theophilus. Luke wrote to him and said this. Many people have set out to write accounts about the events that have been fulfilled among us. They use the eyewitness reports circulating among us from the early disciples. Having carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I also have decided to write a careful account for you so that you can be certain of the truth of everything you were taught. Luke worked hard to get his facts straight about Jesus, but it's not as if he posted online and it got a million shares. It's more that his personal email to Theophilus was forwarded to the world. So what we have then is Luke and three other writers telling the same story, but from different perspectives. So why is there still much doubt about the reliability of these eyewitness accounts? The answer is that no matter how much evidence there are to support them, these stories will always be tough to believe. Now, if it was just a guy walking around teaching, then many wouldn't have a problem. The problem is that these stories are full of the supernatural, miracles. But what makes these stories hard to believe is also the very thing that makes them worth believing. Miracles are always tough to prove because they go beyond our understanding of how the world works. But what I want to suggest is that if we apply the principles and practices of historians, there's a good case for accepting that Jesus performed miracles. Firstly, we have the Gospel accounts, and each account describes miracles of many kinds. There are blind people regaining sight, dead people being raised, demons being driven out, and raging storms being instantly stilled. Would Jesus have been able to draw crowds of thousands over a span of three years from his baptism at 30 to his death at 33 if he was a fake the whole time? And secondly, no one ever actually denied that he performed the miracles. Now, it's no surprise that those who loved and supported him would acknowledge what he did, but what is surprising is that the religious leaders who wanted him dead acknowledged them too. They never questioned his miraculous abilities. What they questioned was the source of his power. They accused him of being evil. And finally, we must ask the question, why is Jesus an obscure, Jewish teacher, the most historically verifiable person in history? Why is there more written about him than any other king or emperor that lived before or after him? I suggest that he must have done something extraordinary. <laughs>